In this episode, we're gonna do a crash course on stainless steel TIG welding. And I'm gonna show you how I do a fillet weld. Hey everyone, my name is Dusty for Pacific Arc TIG Welding, and welcome to my show. I'm a welding artist from Vancouver Island, Canada. I do both two-dimensional and three-dimensional art pieces. And on my show, I love showing off and teaching the art of TIG welding. So if you've never seen my show before, be sure to bounce back, check the previous episodes. There's lots that are free to watch. So today, we're gonna keep it short. We're gonna do a crash course in stainless steel TIG welding. And today, we're gonna do the fillet weld or the T-joint, whatever people call it. First off, we're gonna go over machine setup here, torch setup. I'll show the joint a little bit before we get going, and then I'm gonna weld it and break it down. Okay, as always, we're using the Canaweld 201 Pulse D. The machine is nice and quiet. The fan doesn't run all the time, so we can have it on and talk at the same time. Pretty simple setup we're gonna run here. We're on DC negative, obviously, because we're doing stainless steel. For amperage, I'm gonna probably program it for about 70 amps. 70 amps might be a bit too much because the material is super thin, but I'm gonna be using the foot pedal today, so the foot pedal will dictate actually how much I will use of that 70 amps. Other than that, we're running no downslope, about five seconds of post flow. Really quick blast of pre-flow, no upslope because we're using the foot pedal, 70 amps, pretty simple. Okay, so for torch setup, we got a CK Worldwide 9 style torch. We got a 332 laser tungsten from CK Worldwide. We have a 332 gas screen setup with the adapter from Edge Welding that works with these cups here. So this is an Edge number 12, which just slides over like so. And I'll run my stick out probably about the same length as the width of the cup here. It's just a general rule of thumb I like to follow. It's just a preference of mine. And we'll go over the joint real quick. This is 304 stainless steel. It's about 1.6 millimeters thick. It's about a 16th of an inch thick. And I've already got it tacked up in the T or fillet weld position here. So a lot of people set it on their table like so, but what I'm gonna do for the sake of the demonstration today is I'm gonna have it tilted so that the value of our weld equals about 45 degrees from the plane of your table. The reason this helps when you're just getting going, learning uh, a weld like so, if you're to set it like this on your table, you're gonna have a high side and a gravity affected side. So by gravity affected, what I mean is it's gonna pull everything down to the low side here. So our goal is to keep the weld relatively high as well as low. But when you're first learning, it's a little easier just to tilt it like so, because in this position, you're gonna have equal amount of gravity pulling on each side. Just keeps it a little more simple. So for the sake of filming here, I'm gonna kind of place the camera like so. I might move it around slightly. But basically what our goal is, is we don't want our tungsten to point more one way than the other. We wanna keep it relatively straight in the center. If I turn this a little bit more towards the camera here, you can see for the most part, my tungsten is pointing relatively straight up and down. Uh, like I said, I'm not leaning more one side than the other. Our goal is to keep the valley of the weld relatively even on both sides. So our tungsten is gonna to wanna to point more straight up and down. We're gonna have a little bit of a push angle, like so, because our direction of travel is gonna be coming towards us. I'm gonna do a quick little stop in the middle, and then I'm gonna tie in and continue on towards the end. Okay, so with my gas set to about 25 CFH, you can see I'm overfilling the start here, giving it a little bit more filler rod. And then as I get going, you notice I'm double dipping or double stuffing, I call it sometimes, where I give each step a double tap with the filler rod. Now, I could just switch to a thicker filler rod, but with material this thin, it's easier when it's smaller because I can see better. When you got a big clunky rod in the way, it's tough to see. So I switch to the smaller rod and I double dip it. Now coming up to my tack here. I'm gonna tie in on the second half here from the tack. Again, you'll notice I'm waiting a little bit at the start for the puddle to flow properly between the two surfaces. Now that I'm happy with it, on I go. Double tapping, making sure I fill it up with enough fill every time I step. And again, you see my torch angle has a little bit of a push angle. So it's pushing forward slightly, but still 90 degrees in between the two surfaces. Now as I come towards the end here, lots of fill, backing off the heat a lot, and I post flow the heck out of it. Okay, so I let that cool for a second. Let's pick it up and take a look. So as we turn it towards the light here, we can see a little bit better. 
Overall, the finish of this one turned out really good in my opinion. I managed to keep it relatively cool so the color of the weld stayed more gold than any blues or purples. You can see we got a little bit of color oxide at the beginning. Obviously, I was just getting settled. Just getting the puddle centered properly before I started moving with it. Then as I got rolling, everything centered down pretty good and stayed pretty consistent. The consistency of the steps each time looks pretty even for the most part. I probably should have used a little bit more filler rod. I tried double stuffing each step just to keep it uh, from falling too flat and getting too cool. But overall, you can see the tie-in was pretty good. It wasn't too bad at all. And once I tied in, I carried on the consistency of the first half pretty close for the most part. So again, I should have used a little bit more filler rod, but again, I don't like stepping up to a bigger filler rod with this thin stuff just because it blocks my line of sight a little bit more. So I'd rather double stuff. That way I can just put a little bit more fill in to keep it cool and keep my line of sight nice and clear. If we flip it over to the backside here, we can see the heat affected zone was relatively consistent through the whole run. If I had gone a little bit hotter, I probably would have popped through with a little bit more penetration, but that's what we got this time around, just as a little bit of a demo for fun. But overall, the color of it was pretty good. I'm decently happy with this one here. So there we go, short and sweet today. Hope you enjoyed this one. I like doing these little demos. They're pretty easy for me to do, just to mock up a quick joint, give it a try, see how it goes in my studio here. It's always fun for me. So if you enjoyed it, let me know in the comments below. This is a little bit shorter of an episode than I usually do. Let me know if you like the longer ones or the shorter ones. Shorter ones are easier to make, obviously, but either one's fun. If you're interested, please check out my website. My website has all my art projects on it as well as a little blog. I keep a very loose blog about what I'm doing in the studio here. Also, I have a link to my online TIG welding program. I teach people how to TIG weld online. I don't teach stainless steel, I teach aluminum TIG welding. So if you're interested in learning aluminum TIG welding, I do it by distance. Been going for about eight or nine months now with it. So if you're interested, jump on over to my website, check it out. Shoot me an email, we'll get a conversation going. We'll see where you're at and we'll go from there. But if you enjoyed this episode today, you can repay me in one way. This is the only payment I ask for if you enjoy my videos. Go out and do a random act of kindness for a stranger. Help someone when you see them spill their groceries outside of the car or the grocery store. Help someone whose car is stuck in traffic, push it out the way or something like that. Socially distant, of course. Just do something to spread positivity in the world. We need it right now. Any opportunity that you see to spread some positivity in the world today, go out and do it. But to anybody that watches all the way to the end of these episodes, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Every minute you give me on my channel here, I put a lot of work into these videos. So anybody who hangs out, gets any value from these videos, I really appreciate it. To everyone out there, hope you're doing good. Hope everybody's safe. Talk soon. Thank you very much for tuning in. Peace.